Hello everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. Today in this video I'm going to take you through the value of m in the q equals mc delta t calculation because whilst the actual calculation itself isn't that difficult, the big mystery here is the value of m does seem to change depending on what type of apparatus or what type of exam question you've actually been presented with. So hopefully by the end of this video all clarity will be introduced and you'll be able to follow exactly what to do in any exam question that comes your way. So without further ado, let's get started. So what I want to shed some light on here is this value of m. What is m in q equals mc delta t? Well, let's start with the one that isn't actually pictured on this slide, the indirect method. Now in the indirect method, it's always the mass of water in the beaker. It's not the mass of fuel that gets burnt in the spirit burner that would be underneath it. And so for example, if you had 200 centimeters cubed of water, then you would have 200 grams going into your q equals mc delta t calculation. But what about the direct method? The direct method can be recognized in the exam questions because you've got either two solutions being added together in a polystyrene cup, or perhaps a solid like a carbonate being added to a solution of something like an acid in a polystyrene cup. Well, when we've got a scenario like this one, the new guidance is that we use the mass of the final solution as our value of m. This isn't really too different from, for example, the example that would have been two solutions being added together. So if I had sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, then what I would have normally done is still the same. I add together the mass of the two separate solutions and use that. So for instance, if I had 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide and 25 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid, then my value of M would be 50 because that would be 50 centimeters cubed and I would just put 50 grams into the calculation. Where they've introduced a little bit more clarity now though, thankfully, is when you add a solid to a solution. Are you meant to add them together or not? Some of the older exam papers would say don't, but then the most recent OCR exam papers include something else in the question that sheds a little bit more light on this situation. What you can see on screen now is part of an email response that we got back from OCR when we asked about what is this value of M going to be in the direct method moving forward in the exam papers. What they replied with is really true to what we've seen in the most recent papers, but it was nice to get a confirmation from them. What we've noticed now is in situations where a solid like a carbonate is being added to an acid, they will provide you with enough information in a table of results from the actual practical so that you can calculate the mass of the final solution and they expect you to use that as your value of M. Have a look at the paper one and paper three material that's already on the OCR website or if you're at our college, check your exam papers on Canvas and you'll see what I mean. They use a data table and they have mass of final solution added to the polystyrene cup and then they have another mass recording for mass of the polystyrene cup. And you're just expected to work out the difference between those two and use that as your value of M. Obviously, this is only for the direct method. We mentioned the indirect method earlier in the video where it's always just the mass of the water that's in the beaker or the copper can. Hopefully that does shed some light on this for you though and it means that you're never in doubt again over what that value of M is going to be in the exam because it's either going to be the mass of water in the beaker for the indirect method or the mass of the final solution that gets prepared when you're using the direct method. Thanks very much for watching this video. Please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe so you're the first to know when we upload new content. Until next time, happy revising.